of Ayurveda. What is Ayurveda? So Ayurveda is broken up into two parts, as an Ayu and Veda. Okay, that word can be broken up into two parts. The first means Ayu, Ayu means life, and Veda means science. Okay, so when you plug that together, it becomes science of life. The object of Ayurveda is to maintain the health of a healthy person and to cure diseases of a deceased person. So the first part, to maintain the health of a healthy person, plays a very significant role in Ayurvedic medicine. Because Ayurvedic medicine focuses a lot on preventative health care. Okay? Um, Ayurveda says man is a macrocosm of nature. So what does that mean? It says that we are a part of nature and whatever is outside in the nature is within us. So the nature is made out of five elements. What are those five elements? Earth, fire, water, air, and ether. Okay. Since the universe is made out of the five elements, we are also made out of these five elements. Ether is... So she asked me, what do you mean by ether? Ether is space, nothing but empty space. So Ayurveda says we have our health stands on this tripod. So there, there are three humors called doshas, and uh, if these doshas are in balance, then we are healthy. So what are doshas? Doshas are nothing but humors in our body. You cannot show a dosha in your body. Say for instance, I say vata dosha. So each of these doshas are made out of two elements each, out of the five elements. So vata dosha is made out of air and ether. So that dosha will have the qualities of the elements it's made up of. So can you tell me what qualities air and ether have? Air and ether both are the lightest elements of all the five elements, right? So that's why vata dosha is very light in nature. Okay? Uh, since both the elements are dry, wherever the, there is space or air, there is always dryness, right? So vata dosha is always, we are focusing right now only on vata, okay? So since both the elements are dry, vata is very dry, okay? It's rough, it's rough like the next stage of dryness, it's very rough. Um, air and ether, air is the most mobile dosha, oh, sorry, air is the most mobile element of all the five elements. That's why vata is the most mobile dosha. It will move around in your body, it will, won't stay in one place. And that's why it is the most important and the most powerful dosha in the body because of its mobility. It can move the other two doshas from their places and anywhere in the body and create havoc and create diseases. And that's why it behooves for everyone to keep the water down. Yeah? Um, any other quality you can think of? Cool, cold. Air and ether are always cold in nature. So vata is very cold dosha. Cold. So how does that quality manifest in a person? So if you have a lot of vata in your body, that person will naturally always be cooler, like in temperature-wise. So some people are always warm, right? Some people are always cold. So that person will always be cool, okay? And that person will not be able to tolerate cold. So Minnesota is not the best place for a person to live in. Okay? So now with this person, because it's the lightest, will have most energy? Yes, because, it's, because of the mobile quality of vata, these people cannot sit in one place. They have to do something always. Like their mind is never calm. They will not sit in one place. They will always be going because of that mobility, that mobile quality. And because of the dry and rough quality, the skin usually, their skin is usually very dry. These people are prone to constipation a lot more than other properties because they have a lot of dryness in their system. Any more questions? Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the mind, mm -hmm. will that person be prone to depression or he'll be more 
agile in terms of you know brain these people are more like from psychological point of view the other people are more prone to fear or um depression as well but not to that extent half of people are more prone to depression because depression is a very heavy stable disease so it's pretty similar to kapha but other people usually have fear a little bit of depression maybe of uh, it's some by the bit of anxiety so are these people more adhd 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 yeah many people have seen many other bit of planter adhd people so go to pitta so pitta dosha is formed with fire and water so can you tell me some qualities of fire and water hot absolutely so with the people the first quality of it is hot because of that hot hotness they are always warm to touch these people are always warm to sweat easily because of that hotness another quality of it is sharp because fire is always sharp it's that's why these people are very sharp minded people okay um if the sharp qualities are off, off balance or out of balance these people are can be very sharp tongue they cannot they do not think of the feelings of the other person and they can say whatever comes to their mouth if the sharp quality is off balance um another quality is liquid or oily so it the spreads more like oil if oil spills on something how does it spread slowly right so pitta usually spreads like that an example is rash is a pitta disease so rash will always spread slowly all over your body right it won't spread right away. and another quality is oily because of that oily quality these people have very oily face or oily skin or oily hair Mm-hmm. Fire puts up water, puts out fire. Well, so, uh, right. You you don't have to. Um, it is it is a place where these two live in uh, combination. So you don't have to see it as uh, an actual practical fire, but qualities of that element. Okay. It is in a bit, uh, form of a steam. Yeah, you can say that. <laughs> The steam is more similar to kapha, okay? okay? Not too bad with this. I'm no, I'm not too bad. Uh, you can say that the steam is not a bad example because it's water and it's hot, right? So that's a very good example. You just have to see the qualities of those two. So the best thing for a pitta person to do is because of the hot and sharp quality, these people are always going. They have, they want to achieve something. They have aims in life and. they are very very good orators they are usually managerial or ceos are most of the people because that's their qualities uh, which are naturally built up in them and they can reach till there um but the, if you are always going and going and going you don't step back you're losing a lot of yourself so the best thing for with the person to do is to surrender is to step back and for a while not do something okay because that's the opposite quality of the okay? is to surrender to step back to see what's going on and wait for a while and not do anything okay um any questions regarding the pitta so if you do not control it you could end up having a burnout yes yes and that's why burnout as in literally people the people burn out yeah because because their nature is so hot and sharp and fiery that you would tend to like lose everything if you just don't step back and look at what's going on in your life now let's go to kapha kapha is made of water and earth so as you can see these two are the most heaviest elements of all the five elements right that's why the first quality of kapha is heavy these people are naturally heavy so they have longer thicker bones broader rib cages so for instance
football players, have you seen football players like huge people, right? Those are usually couple people. Um, they, they are very tall, very broad, like bigger strong. If even because the kapha is made of water and earth, kapha people can put on weight even if they drink only water. Because you're adding water to water, right? So they, they can put on weight easily and it's very hard for a kapha person to lose weight. Because of because they are naturally very heavy in nature. Because of the heavy nature, these these people are very stable in life. Because of that heaviness, they have a very stable quality or stability in life. These people don't budge, uh, or, but these people are very emotional. Very, very soft-hearted, very emotional people. I always say, a kapha person, your best friend should always be a kapha person. Because, because they are very good natured, soft hearted people, and a couple of person always will keep your secrets, they won't share it out. So, see to it that your best friends are a couple. Okay? Um, another quality is cold, because water and earth are cold, they are cool in nature. Kapha, even couple people and water people cannot tolerate cold, because they are naturally very cool. Um, another quality is oily, I and mean, Pitta and Kapha share the oily quality, and Vata and Kapha share the cold quality. Now, oily as in, it's, it's more like uh, mucusy oily, like very thick, um, heavy, thick mucus, mucusy quality, right? Uh, kapha is also unctuous. Um, it's very smooth to touch. It's very soft and smooth. Okay? So you can compare kapha to our mucus or phlegm. So let me tell you, all these three doshas are present in everybody. You cannot function without these three doshas. Now, um, Ayurveda says there are seven bodily tissues in our body. The first one is rasa, that is live. The second one is Rata, that is blood. Third is Mamsa, muscles. Fourth is Meda, fat. Fifth is Asti, bones. Sixth is Mancha, bone marrow. And seventh is Shukra, our reproductive organs, or egg or ovary, or sperm. Okay? So everybody has all these seven khatus. Then I will say there are three waste products in our body, feces, urine, and sweat. Okay. Any questions regarding that? But these guna uh, doshas are similar to like uh, sattvic, rajasik, and tamasik. Yeah. Very good question. So, um, sattvic, sattva, rajatama are mostly related to the mind. These are related to the body. Yeah. Um, and there is a very big, I would say there is a very deep connection between the mind and the body. So um, usually Pitta people are more Rajasic um, by nature, uh, Kapha people are more Tamasic by nature, and Vata people are also Rajasic by nature. So it, it's very important for every property to maintain the Sattva, mostly for a Vata person because Vata is very, very mobile. Their mind cannot stay calm because of that mobility. Um, now, does everybody know about prakriti? What prakriti is? So, prakriti, I will talk about the concept of prakriti. Prakriti is your unique constitution. What, which doshas you are made of. Okay? So, these can be a combination of two doshas or a single dosha or three doshas. It can be anything. So for instance, Vata Pitta, Pitta Kapha, Kapha Pitta. So now I explain the qualities of those ones. You might find some of the qualities are more in you than other qualities. So the most qualities of the doshas which you have make up your prakriti. Okay? This prakriti is similar to the DNA or your blood group which never changes till you die. Okay? 
I'm saying it's similar. I'm not saying it's 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 your DNA. No, it's not. It's it's similar to that. I'm just saying it so that it doesn't doesn't change. This property is formed when when you're conceived in your mother's womb, and it will not change till you die. I have some of my clients come to me and say, "Please, can you change my property?" And I'm like, "I'm sorry, you have to die for that." <laughs> but I, I cannot change your property. It's just impossible. But what we can change is called vikruti. Okay, vikruti means your current imbalance. So what is going on in your body right now? If you do not follow the right diet or lifestyle, the doshas which are in balance all the time in in your body go out of balance and create diseases or symptoms in your body, and that's called vikruti. So our goal is for us to be healthy is to bring those doshas back from the vikrut stage to the prakrut stage. Okay, so to bring it from vikruti to prakriti, so so you're healthy. Okay, this is the goal of Ayurveda. Any questions regarding prakriti and vikruti? So is prakriti genetic? No, I mean you cannot say it's genetic, but I'm just giving a giving an example. To say that you are very unique, so as you, your genes are your genes, right? I believe that is what he is suggesting. Right, right. right. The right. and the Vikruti is uh, environmental are the factors affecting factors. yeah affecting your health. Yeah. So genetic as in, uh, but I don't want to say that property is the genes. No, I wouldn't say that. But it's similar genes. So for example, you can say. Uh, if you are a kapha person, not necessarily other person, even if he is a kapha person, he will have different percentages of those two doshas in his body. That's why every person on this planet is unique. Ayurveda says no two people on this earth are similar. Okay? Any questions regarding that? Now let's go to the concept of Agni. This is a very important concept in Ayurveda. It's called Agni. It's called the digestive fire. Now Ayurveda says there is a digestive fire inside us, inside our stomach, which digests whatever we eat. So it, it is not only limited to digestion, but it's, it's like a broader concept of assimilation, metabolism, digestion, the entire digestive process, basically. Okay? Now, this Agni, how does it work? Whenever we eat something, it will start the process. So for instance, just compare it to the Agni outside our body. So instance, if you're cooking something on the stove, if you put it on simmer, it will take a longer time to cook. If you put it on high, it will cook faster, it will burn, or it might, it might burn. And if you put it on medium, it will cook on a gradual slower rate. Right? So it's similar in our body. If our agni, if our digestive fire is low, is weak, it won't be able to digest whatever we are eating. Right? Completely. So it will digest some and it, will, it won't digest some. So some of the food will remain partially digested and then digestive toxins are created in our body. That's called ama. And they stay in our body. And if the vata goes high, it will move those digestive toxins outside or from our digestive system around the body. Okay? And then diseases occur. So Ayurveda says having a strong agni is very, very important. All the diseases, most of the diseases, I realize actually 90% of the diseases start from our gut or our digestive system because we are not able to digest the food better. Okay? Um, in addition to just the digestive process, it also takes care of the vision, body temperature, complexion, bravery, and anger, the agni in our system. Okay. Any questions regarding the agni? What do you mean by regulates bravery and anger? Uh, so, for instance, Ayurveda says um, our mind and our digestive system is connected very much. Okay, so 
if you're eating a lot of spicy food, very fiery food, or like chilies and spicy stuff, then your rajas in your mind automatically starts going high, right? So it's like saying, you become what you eat. Absolutely. You are what you eat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. So let's go with the definition of health according to Ayurveda. How does Ayurveda consider that you are a healthy person? It's a very broad, very elaborate definition. Okay. So the first, Ayurveda says your dosha should be balanced. Second, your agni should be balanced. Third, your seven bodily tissues should be balanced. Fourth, your waste product should be balanced. And fifth, it is not only limited to the physical aspect, but it goes beyond and says your soul, senses, and your mind should be contented. So it's a very broad definition of health. If you see this way, then I would say no person on the earth is healthy, <laughs> according to Ayurveda. But um, we can achieve all these things if we follow proper diet and lifestyle in order to be healthy. Yeah? Uh, and if, if the doshas are way off balance, there are always herbs to help to get those doshas back to balance. Now, how does Ayurveda work? If you have a disease, what will Ayurveda do? For instance, if your vata is high, if you have arthritis, so arthritis is a classic vata disease. If you have arthritis, what Ayurveda usually does is a vata disease, so it will treat with the qualities opposite of vata. Okay? So, does vata mean something like an inflammation? No, inflammation is mostly because of pitta or kapha. Vata is mostly dryness. So the cracking of joints, um, difficulty in motion, or um, mostly like... It, it, arthritis is inflammation, usually a little bit of pitta is also involved in arthritis, but it's mostly a vata disease because, because the... Uh, what do you say? The synovial fluid in your joints goes down and makes your joints dry and it pulls out the liquid from your system. So it's because of vata. Okay. Yeah, so like knee failing, so that. Knee swelling? Knees are, knees are hurting. Yeah, the, gap, uh, the gap continues to decline because of arthritis. Right, right, right. So wherever there is shy or reduction or wherever there is um, removal of fluid from your body is all because of one. Or wherever there is pain in the body, only vata can cause pain in your body. So then is it lack? I mean is it down so there is less of vata in you? It's more of vata in you. So what vata will do is vata is very dry, right? Vata is always moving in your body, right? It won't stay in one place. So what happens compared to air or wind, okay? So if you're passing a wind through a tube and the tube is bent somewhere, the wind will slower its rate of moving to that turn, right? and it goes slow from the bend. So our joints are always bent, right? I mean, they're, it's, it's at our joints where the rate of vata goes down. And if it gets stagnant in your joint and it's not able to move, then it causes all the symptoms. Right, but you just said arthritis is increased vata in the body. Right, right. If it is increased, that means there will be more movement. I mean, vata means movement. Vata has other, other qualities too, right? It is dry and rough. Right. Right? So it will suck out all the water. So if the wind is blowing from one place, what will it do? It will take things with it, right? And so if the digestive toxins are removed from your system and they go in your joints, what will happen? 
inflammation, right? And then increased vata, why I'm saying is if the vata in your body is increased so much that it cannot go out of your body, it's going to be stagnant somewhere in your body, right? So it usually finds the weaker spots in your body. So whatever is weak in your body, vata is going to go to those spots and create diseases. Okay, so that's why I'm saying joints are one of the weakest parts after, as you reach your 60 or like old age, those already are very weak. The joints become naturally weak. Right? And then all the symptoms start. Okay? Uh, so Ayurveda works on this principle. It's called light increases light and opposites balance. Okay? Say for instance, you're a puffa person, you're very heavy. And puffer people usually like sweets. Sweet is a taste. <laughs> sweet is a very heavy taste because sweet is made of earth and water. Okay? Even sweet taste is made out of the heaviest elements. So if you add those heavy elements to already heavy elements present in your body, what is gonna happen? Puffer is gonna increase. Right? So in order to reduce puffer, we have to follow or use things which are opposite to heavy. So lighter foods. Not to eat sweet. <laughs> Not to eat sweet that much. Yeah. Or or if you really like sweet, choose fruits over sugar. Like actual sugar. So fructose is easily digestible. That's sucrose. We are talking about the principle on how Ayurveda works. How Ayurveda will treat a symptom. So let's go on to the next as I said, ama or digestive toxins are created if your agni or your digestive fire is weak. Okay. Now, what are the if you have ama or digestive toxins in your systems anywhere, you would have one or ten of those symptoms. So the first one is coating on tongue, especially upon awakening. And even if you scrape your tongue, it won't go away. Okay. That's a classic symptom of ama. Frequent fatigue or lethargy, no matter what you eat, no matter what you do, you're still lethargic or you, you feel tired all the time. It's mostly a classic symptom of ama. Fuzzy thinking, you're not clear-minded, you forget things easily. Aches and pains in the body, bloating and gas, skin blemishes, stick, stickiness of body fluids, like sticky sweat, sticky urine. Um, bad breath, sinking stool, mucus in stool, cloudy urine, lack of appetite, lack of taste, or always sweet taste in the mouth are some of the symptoms. Well, Amma has hundreds of symptoms, but these are like few normally, regularly operating symptoms. Now let's start with the, with the um, Ayurveda for summer. Ayurveda talks a lot about doshas and how they change with every season. So our doshas naturally change with every season because our body and the environment outside are connected deeply. Okay? Now Ayurveda says there are six seasons according to Ayurveda. Shishira, that is late winter. Vasanta, that is spring. Grishma, that is summer. Varsha, that is rainy season. Sharad, that is autumn. And Hemanta, that is early winter. Okay, now, every dosha change according to these seasons naturally. So, we are going to go to the next slide. How does the imbalance of dosha occur seasonally? Each dosha in each season goes through three processes. Okay. First is chaya, that is the dosha will start accumulating. Now, whenever I tell about this, I usually give an example of a pot. Say, for instance, you have a pot. You're filling water in it. That means the water is starting to accumulate in that pot, right? And consider your pot as the body, as your body, okay? Now, prakopa, that is aggravates. Now, you're filling the water and the water has reached to the brim of that pot. Okay, that means the dosha is so high that now it's 
that somehow to start having symptoms in your body. Okay? So that's why prakopa or that dosha is going way beyond their limit. Okay? And so it reaches to the brain. And prashama means it will start to go back to its normal position. So now we are taking out the water and keeping it to a normal level where it won't fall off. That's called a prashama. So each dosha goes through these three processes in every season. Okay? Now we will see what dosha goes through what in which season. So vata usually will start to accumulate during early summer. It will start filling, vata will start increasing and accumulating in your body in early summer. It will aggravate in late summer and calms down in autumn. Okay? Pitta usually accumulates in early summer, aggravates in late summer, and that's why we are right now in the very Pitta season. Right now. Okay? And calms down in autumn. Kapha accumulates in late winter, aggravates in spring, and calms down in summer. And sometimes, you know, because of the high heat, the kapha will start melting. And sometimes people fall sick during the just right before fall because because that's when the because of the heat the kapha has started to melt. Okay. Now, right now, we are in the summer and we are in the height of the season. Naturally, everybody's pitta, no matter what property you are, everybody's pitta has started to go up. Okay? And if that pitta goes off balance, you will start to have symptoms. So headache, nausea, acid reflux, um, maybe a lot of sweating, hair loss are some of the pitta symptoms. Are allergies possible? Allergies are also pitta. Mm -hmm. But I've seen allergies somehow, as we are going late in the summer, allergies somehow go down. Okay? But the allergy will again start to spring up during the fall and the spring. So the fall and the spring are the worst season for allergies. Okay? That's because the doshas are transitioning that time. Okay? Even the seasons are transitioning and the doshas are transitioning too. So that's why it's very hard. Your immunity goes down when the seasons are transitioning. So you're very much prone to allergies that time. Now what is summer? It's a bit the season because if there is a lot of heat. There are long days of bright sun and sharp intensity always. Like whenever you go out, Summer is always intense and sharp and hot. Because of that in intense heat, it dries things out. Okay? So summer is always dry. And here in Venezuela, it's dry. Like, really, really dry. Um, a little bath aggravated qualities are also there. Like expansion and mobility. During winters, we're always in the house. We're cozy, you don't want to go out that much. But in the summer we are always in the expansive mode, right? We go out, we do everything. So it's, it's a little bit of vata is also there in the summer. But, now early signs of pitta imbalance. If you see some of these signs in your body, that means pitta has started to increase in your body. Pitta will naturally increase to a, to a point where it won't show any symptoms and it's natural for the pitta to increase. But if it's going out of its natural level, it will start showing symptoms. So what symptoms would it show? First is rash, acne, cold sores, nausea or missing meals, acid reflux, ulcers, heartburn, increased heat in the body, bruised tools. Acute inflammation in joints that is hard to touch, okay. irritability, anger, frustration. These are a few of the, the time balance symptoms. Any questions regarding this?